If we look carefully at this diagram, we can see that the battery itself has an internal resistance that is denoted by lowercase r, and then there is this external resistance denoted by uppercase r that's also present in the circuit. So we can actually simplify the drawing by imagining that there is a battery whose EMF is symbolized by this fancy E along with two resistors. One is the internal resistance of the battery and the other is the external resistance. And we might notice that these two resistors are in series with one another. And that's because if we drew a pathway from lowercase r to uppercase r, we would not encounter any junctions. There's no diverging pathways in the circuit, so they are indeed in series. And we know that when resistors are in series, we can obtain a quantity known as the equivalent resistance by simply summing the individual resistance values. So for example, we could say in this case that the equivalent resistance would equal the sum of lowercase r plus uppercase r. Now we were given these values. The lowercase r is the internal resistance, that's one ohm and the uppercase R is the external resistance, which in this case is the resistance of the wire itself, so that would be five ohms. So of course adding these together gives us a equivalent resistance of six ohms. Now we're going to be using that value to determine the total current that is traveling through the circuit. And we have to understand that the total current is given to us by Ohm's law. We know that the EMF delivered by the battery would equal the total current multiplied by this equivalent resistance. Now the question does give us the EMF of the battery. It is two volts, so we can enter that into our equation. And then again, the equivalent resistance of the circuit is six ohms as determined earlier. We can now divide both sides of the equation by the six ohms. And we can see that the total current coursing through the circuit is one third of an amp. So we can might maybe call that 0.333 amps. So this is the total amount of current. And what we have to understand is that current is going to be traveling through both the internal resistance of the battery as well as the external resistance present in the wire. So keep that in mind as we solve the parts of the question. We move to part A and we are asked to calculate the energy transferred from chemical form in the battery. Now, energy, we might recall, is equal to the power multiplied by time. And in this question, the time was given to us as two minutes, so we know that. It's the power that's going to be a little bit challenging for us here, but the power that is delivered by the battery is known as the current multiplied by the EMF of the battery. So we can actually make that substitution. And this is why it was advantageous for us to have found the current earlier. So what we'll do is we'll calculate the energy by taking the current of 0.33 amps, multiplied by the EMF supplied by the battery, which was the two volts, multiplied by the time. Now the time was given as two minutes, but of course we need a standard unit of time, so we'll multiply that by 60 in order to turn it into seconds. So this becomes 120 seconds. So if we pick up our calculators and punch this in, we will see that the total energy in part A is equal to 80 joules. We can move on to part B, which asks us to determine the total energy dissipated as thermal energy in the wire. Now remember the wire had a resistance value of uppercase R. So if we want to calculate the energy dissipated as thermal energy in the wire, we can use the same kind of idea. We say energy is equal to power times time. Now for the resistor, because we don't have the potential difference across that, we're just going to use a slightly different formula for the power. And the equation that we'll be using will be the current squared multiplied by the resistance value for the resistance of the wire. So that's just another power equation that you're probably familiar with from the chapter. And it's best to use that one because we know the current and we know the resistance value. So we plug in the current of 0.333 amps and don't forget to square it. We'll multiply that by uppercase R which is the resistance of the wire and that was the five ohms. And then again, we'll multiply that by the 120 seconds of time that was given in the question. So we punch this into our calculators and we end up with 66.7.
and this will also come out in joules. Finally, in part C, we are asked to calculate the total energy dissipated as thermal energy in the battery. Same kind of thing as we did in part B, but in this case, because they're asking us about the battery, we're going to use the internal resistance of the battery. That's the lowercase r. So we'll have energy is equal to the power, which is the i squared, and then times lowercase r times time. So one more time, we take the current of 0.333 amps, we square it, we multiply it by the internal resistance of the battery, which was 1 ohm, and we multiply it by the 120 seconds. And when we work this out, we're going to get 13.33, or just 13.3 joules. So this would be the correct answer to part C.